fires we don't do on our own. I mean, imagine if everybody had their own fire service. Imagine that. And yet the truth is, private fire companies work all over America and do a better job. It comes in being efficient with what you do and watching how you spend your money. Our traffic lights are synchronized now, so there aren't traffic jams. Private parks are cleaner and safer. Oh, whoa, there's your laptop. Libraries are better run, too. They're much more computerized. They know what they're doing. A private water system did what government couldn't do. Bring clean water for less, because the workers now work. Were you goofing off before? Sitting well, around, drinking coffee? Well, occasionally. But the left hates privatization. They want to privatize everything. They don't want to pay for the things, the roads and the dams and the rivers. Yes, we do. We just want the money spent well. Privatize the fire department. Privatize the police department. Privatize everything. Yes, privatize everything. That's our show tonight. And now, John Stossel. Privatize everything. Okay, maybe I didn't mean that. I got carried away. There are some things government ought to do. But just a few things. Most are listed in here in the Constitution. But note that this is thin. This makes it very clear that there's not much that the founders thought government should do. In fact, this is mostly about what the federal government should not do. And the founders were right, because most things work better if the central planners butt out, leaving individuals more freedom of choice. And that happens when we leave things in private hands. So how much can we privatize? What should be privatized? Len Gilroy studies that for the Reason Foundation. So what, for example? Things like changing the oil in vehicles, uh, sweeping streets, trimming trees, things like that, where we are, many cities are paying public employees lavish salaries and, and benefits to perform functions that you could easily compete out uh, to the private sector and get better bids. But why do you get better bids in the private sector? Why can't the government employees do it? cheaper, better? Well, that's a great question. It's simple. It's because in the public sector, you have a monopoly. And when you have a monopoly, by definition, you don't have competition. Absent competition, you don't have any pressure on prices. So when you actually go to a competitive bidding system and you have the private sector competing to provide services for you, what you tend to do is drive down costs and improve service quality. And that's what we find uh, that when you do this process right, that's the outcomes that you're going to get. Lower cost, better quality. You published this privatization report. Uh, you say Washington State privatized its state-run liquor monopoly. Yeah, one of the things that many people across the country don't realize is that there are still today 17 states that since prohibition actually own and operate their own liquor retail and or wholesale um, operations, meaning they either have government-run liquor stores or government-run trucks that deliver liquor to, to stores. After prohibition, states said, well, this is a dangerous drug and kids will get it, there'll be drunk driving accidents, we have to control it. Right, so that was the original rationale. What you tend to see today is that... You, you, see, know, you see the same thing now with marijuana legalization. Right, but what's interesting about that is that you don't have any states clamoring to actually operate that themselves, which is different from what happened after liquor. Washington State uh, was one of those that for many, 70 plus years, had its own state-run uh, wholesale and retail monopolies. Uh, voters voted a couple years ago to dismantle that. And one of the things that uh, is interesting is after we've been through a year now, and if you look at the results... And the critics said, kids will drink, there'll be more car accidents. And what we've seen is that that has not panned out. You have fewer uh, DUI-related incidents, accidents, um, arrests. You have fewer DUI fatalities. You have underage drinking is flat. That hasn't changed. And so the sky didn't fall. California hired a company to run public parks. Today, you have about a handful of parks where the private sector is charging the same fees that the state was charging to let people in and to do camping fees and things like that, but they're paying the state for the privilege of doing that. So instead The state, of, which was losing money, is right. now making money. Right. But this is what people would say... This can't be because the company makes a profit. If you have a company making a profit and they're saving you money at the same time, that gives you a sense of how inefficient the public sector can be. In Chicago, a Democratic mayor, Rahm Emanuel, uh, lowered recycling costs by 
causing competition between government workers and private workers. Explain. You allow the public employees and the private sector to actually compete against each other. And so in Chicago, uh, Mayor Emanuel uh, broke up the city into different zones and he kept the public sector in some of them and he bid out the recycling in some other parts. So you actually had a real world uh, competitive test case. And what happens is, again, competition, just by bringing in the private sector, the public employees realized that they were going to have to step up their game because all of a sudden there's encroachment into their turf, so to speak. And what happened? Um, over six months, they started, they saved about $2 million after just the first six months. This is coming out of the, this is reported by the mayor's office. And they reduced the overall cost by 35% over a six-month period.